Um, thank you. Um, so uh, now this last term, I used MS Teams to deliver a problem class to about 65 math students. And uh, just like everyone else, I had the issue that when teaching online, there's actually very little feedback going on between the students and the teacher or vice versa. In particular, there are no visual clues from the faces of the students who don't share their cameras. Students very rarely dare to ask questions online. And passingly, they don't even dare asking questions in the break between the two hours of class or after class. They just don't. Now, these are some effective substitutes uh, which uh, I, I found either through my personal experience or from having learned from other people or reading online. Um, now, one is using an online forum. I use Piazza, I loved it. Back then I used Blackboard Learn and it's just really bad. Um, yeah, so I won't say more about this. Uh, the other one is quizzes or polls, if you wanna call them that. Now, by this, I mean mostly multiple choice questions, but actually you can use many other question types. So you can have free text, you can have uh, file upload, Likert, um, ranking options and whatnot. Now, um, the good things about these uh, methods are uh, they work well in large classes. In fact, um, Piazza would say uh, online forums really only work in large classes. Um, they're both intuitive to set up and start using. Uh, they're very efficient ways to collect and spread information, takes very little time. And they work well with a poor internet connection and with any hardware. Now, what are the bad things and how to mitigate them? So first, Piazza or online forums in general, I found it quite hard to convince the majority of students to use it regularly. Some advice about this, one, if you start immediately in the first couple of weeks, you really need to get it going. Uh, second, give challenging homework, ideally for credit. Uh, and third, provide instructions, but keep the instructions simple. Don't talk about all the advanced features or you scare off the students and then they don't use it. As for quizzes, um, students can get pretty tired of answering them, especially I found out when you're asking for feedback. Uh, you tend to have very low turnout, though it still is useful. So the first advice is don't overdo it. And the second, explain the students that because they're not giving you feedback the usual way, you need to ask them feedback with quizzes. Um, I want to talk more about quizzes. So there are many possible choices of software to implement them. And the best, cho the best choice depends on your needs. Since um, all this software is very quick to learn, you can actually, it can make sense to use different software for different use cases uh, because it takes no time to learn at all. So to receive feedback from the students, I like best using Microsoft Forms. It's super easy to learn, um, whereas for, you know, when, when I have to use math quizzes, whether it was to, you know, to give homework, to do a home or for using in a live class, um, I, I wanted to start from a bank of pre-existing exercises typed in LaTeX and, you know, to create these quiz, quizzes. And these were my requirements. First, I wanted to be able to use my usual LaTeX syntax, by which I mean, you know, using my usual predefined uh, abbreviations, packages and whatnot. And two, I wanted to be able to create quizzes quickly, okay? Many of the web-based interfaces, they're slow, they're clunky, they're clunky, they require a lot of clicking around. I didn't wanna to have to deal with that. And three, I wanted a future-proof solution that did not lock me into a software platform. Now, this is the solution I found. Um, so I typed the questions and the possible answers and the solutions in my favorite LaTeX editor locally, and then shared both PDFs to the students. Then um, to implement the multiple choice questions in LaTeX, I use the exam class. Uh, there are many other packages one can use, but this one has a especially clear syntax and is very flexible. I highly recommend it. Um, I use the text expanding app to enter commands more quickly and the problem solving package to hide or display solutions at will. Um, all things in brown in these slides are links, so you can click on them. Now, for students to answer multiple choice questions, um, you can then use the software, the software platform of your choice, just using a generic template, question one, answer ABC, and what the question is and their answers are, it actually is written in the PDF that you created locally very quickly. So this method really is quite quick. It does have also some downsides, of course. Now, to collect answers, the software I use was Mentimeter, but I think it changes very little if you use other one. 
Uh, with Mentimeter, all the answers are anonymous. So you really can only do formative assessments. If you synchronously, turns out students overwhelmingly preferred the quiz competition feature. I'm not exactly sure why I didn't like it any better, but they did. And uh, to have students interact with one another before they answer a question, you can separate them in breakout rooms. If you make them small enough, three to five students, uh, then students actually dare to interact with one another. I had a large class, so of course I wasn't myself participating in breakout rooms. And uh, I should say about two thirds of the students participated to them and about one third of the students decided to join the class after I was done with the breakout rooms. I always assign the first 20 minutes of class to them. Now, the downsides of this approach. So first, there's no randomization of answers possible. Second, you cannot display answer dependent feedback. Um, now, some additional things that one could try, and I haven't yet, but I would like to try. One is to use peer-wise to have students generate multiple choice questions as a homework, and this would save time um, to me that I have to create all these quizzes. One is to use uh, this uh, LaTeX package called Web Quiz, which allows to convert quizzes from LaTeX into HTML code, and then you can have your you know, uh, online quizzes. Um, Another, um, so Blackboard Learn, I've used it to create quizzes and I found it ex especially clunky, really slow, hard to learn, but it does have some serious pluses. Uh, first, most universities use it. Second is very flexible. In particular, you can use it for summative assessments. It was really the only thing that I could use, I was told. And um, it can be used to implement confidence-based marking um, by setting multiple choice questions as a jumble sentence question. Now, um, moreover, you can upload from a tech file exercises in bulk to Blackboard to generate quizzes using either of these two Python scripts. Now, I haven't tried them, and if you do try them, uh, please let me know how they worked out for you. I would love to find out. Um, that's, uh, that's it.